Section 28 of Tales of Old Japan. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Tales of Old Japan by Lord Reedsdale. Section 28. The Ghost of Sakura, Part 4. Note. Of the many fair scenes of Yedo, None is better worth visiting than the temple of Zojoji, one of the two great burial places of the shoguns. Indeed, if you wish to see the most beautiful spots of any oriental city, ask for the cemeteries. The homes of the dead are ever the loveliest places. Standing in a park of glorious firs and pines beautifully kept, which contains quite a little town of neat, clean-looking houses, together with thirty-four temples for the use of the priests and attendants of the shrines, the main temple, with its huge red pillars supporting a heavy Chinese roof of grey tiles, is approached through a colossal open hall which leads into a stone courtyard. At one end of this courtyard is a broad flight of steps, the three or four lower ones of stone and the upper ones of red wood. At these, the visitor is warned by a notice to take off his boots, a request which Englishmen, with characteristic disregard of the feelings of others, usually neglect to comply with. The main hall of the temple is of large proportions, and the high altar is decorated with fine bronze candelabra, incense burners, and other ornaments, and on two days of the year a very curious collection of pictures representing the five hundred gods, whose images are known to all persons who have visited Canton, is hung along the walls. The big bell outside the main hall is rather remarkable on account of the great beauty of the deep bass waves of sound which it rolls through the city than on account of its size which is as nothing when compared with that of the big bells of Moscow and Peking. Still, it is not to be despised even in this respect, for it is ten feet high and five feet eight inches in diameter, while its metal is a foot thick. It was hung up in the year 1673. But the chief objects of interest in these beautiful grounds are the chapels attached to the tombs of the shoguns. It is said that as Prince Ieyasu was riding into Yedo to take possession of his new castle, the abbot of Zojoji, an ancient temple which then stood at Hibiya, near the castle, went forth and waited before the gate to do homage to the prince. Ieyasu, seeing that the abbot was no ordinary man, stopped and asked his name, and entered the temple to rest himself. The smooth-spoken monk soon found such favor with Ieyasu that he chose Zojoji to be his family temple, and seeing that its grounds were narrow and inconveniently near the castle, he caused it to be removed to its present site. In the year 1610, the temple was raised, by the intercession of Ieyasu, to the dignity of the imperial temples, which, until the last revolution, were presided over by princes of the blood, and to the abbot was granted the right, on going to the castle, of seeing in his litter as far as the entrance hall, instead of dismounting at the usual place and proceeding on foot through several gates and courtyards nor were the privileges of the temple confined to barren honors, for it was endowed with lands of the value of 5,000 kokus of rice yearly. When Ieyasu died, the shrine called Antoku-in was erected in his honor to the south of the main temple. Here, on the 17th day of the fourth month, the anniversary of his death, ceremonies are held in honor of his spirit, deified as Gongen-sama, and the place is thrown open to all who may wish to come and pray. But Ieyasu is not buried here. His remains lie in a gorgeous shrine among the mountains some eighty miles of Yedo, at Nikko, a place so beautiful that the Japanese have a rhyming proverb which says that he who has not seen Nikko should never pronounce the word Keko. Charming, delicious, grand, beautiful. Hidetada, the son and successor of Ieyasu, together with Ienobu, Ietsugu, Ieshige, Ieyoshi, and Iemochi, the sixth, seventh, ninth, twelfth and fourteenth shoguns of the Tokugawa dynasty are buried in three shrines attached to the temple. The remainder, with the exception of Iemitsu, the third shogun, who lies with his grandfather at Niko, are buried at Uyeno. The shrines are of exceeding beauty, lying on one side of a splendid avenue of scotch firs, which border a broad, well-kept gravel walk. Passing through a small gateway of rare design, we come into a large stone courtyard, lined with a long array of colossal stone lanterns, the gift of the vassals of the departed prince. 
A second gateway, supported by gilt pillars carved all round with figures of dragons, leads into another court, in which a bell tower, a great cistern cut out of a single block of stone like a sarcophagus, and a smaller number of lanterns of bronze. These are given by the Gosan Ke, the three princely families in which a succession to the office of shogun was vested. Inside this is a third court, partly covered like a cloister, the approach to which is a doorway of even greater beauty and richness than the last. The ceiling is gilt and painted with arabesques and with heavenly angels playing on musical instruments, and the panels of the walls are sculptured in high relief with admirable representations of birds and flowers, life-size, lifelike, all being colored to imitate nature. Inside this enclosure stands a shrine, before the closed door of which a priest on one side and a retainer of the house of Tokugawa on the other sit mounting guard, mute and immovable, as though they themselves were part of the carved ornaments. Passing on one side of the shrine, we come to another court, plainer than the last, and at the back of the little temple inside it is a flight of stone steps, at the top of which, protected by a bronze door, stands a simple monumental urn of bronze on a stone pedestal. Under this is the grave itself, and it has always struck me that there is no small amount of poetical feeling in this simple ending to so much magnificence. The sermon may have been preached by design, or it may have been by accident, but the lesson is there. There is little difference between the three shrines, all of which are decorated in the same manner. It is very difficult to do justice to their beauty in words. Riding many thousand miles away from them, I have the memory before me of a place green in winter, pleasant and cool in the hottest summer, of peaceful cloisters, of the fragrance of incense, of the subdued chant of richly robed priests, and the music of bells, of exquisite designs, harmonious coloring, rich gilding. The hum of the vast city outside is unheard here. Ieyasu himself, in the mountains of Niko, has no quieter resting place than his descendants in the heart of the city over which they ruled. Besides the graves of the shoguns, Zojoji contains other lesser shrines, in which are buried the wives of the second, sixth, and eleventh shoguns, and the father of Ienobu, the sixth shogun, who succeeded to the office by adoption. There is also a holy place called the Satsuma Temple, which is special interest. In it is a tablet of honor of Tadayoshi, the fifth son of Ieyasu, whose title was Matsudaira Satsuma no Kami, and who died young. At his death, five of his retainers, with one Ogasasawara Kemotsu at their head, disemboweled themselves that they might follow their young master into the next world. They were buried in this place, and I believe that this is the last instance on record of the ancient Japanese custom of Junshi, that is to say, dying with a master. There are during the year several great festivals which are specially celebrated at Zojoji. The chief of these are the Kaisanki, or Founder's Day, which is on the 18th day of the 7th month, the 25th day of the 1st month, the anniversary of the death of the monk Honen, the founder of the Jodo sect of Buddhism, that to which the temple belongs, the anniversary of the death of Buddha, on the 15th of the 2nd month, the birthday of Buddha on the 8th day of the 4th month, and from the 6th to the 15th of the 10th month. At Uyeno is the second of the burial grounds of the shoguns, the temple Toyezan, which stood in the grounds of Uyeno, was built by Iemitsu, the third of the shoguns of the house of Tokugawa. In the year 1625, in honor of Yakushi Niyorai, the Buddhist Esculapius, it faces the Kimon, or Devil's Gate, of the castle and was erected upon the model of the temple of Hiyeizan, one of the most famous of the holy places of Kyoto. Having founded the temple, the next care of Iemitsu was to pray that Morizumi, the second son of the retired emperor, should come and reside there, and from that time until 1868, the temple was always presided over by a Miya, or a member of the Mikado's family, who was specially charged with the care of the tomb of Ieyasu at Niko, and whose position was that of an ecclesiastical chief or primate over the east of Japan. The temples in Yedo are not to be compared in point of beauty with those in and about Peking. What is marble there is wood here. Still, they are very handsome and in the days of its magnificence the temple of Uyeno was one of the finest. Alas, the main temple, the hall in honor of the sect to which it belongs, the hall of services, the bell tower, the entrance hall, and the residence of the prince of the blood, 
were all burnt down in the Battle of Uyeno in the summer of 1868, when the shogun's men made their last stand in Yedo against the troops of the Mikado. The fate of the day was decided by two field pieces, which the latter contrived to mount on the roof of a neighboring tea house, and the shogun's men, driven out of the place, carried off the Mia in the vain hope of raising his standard in the north as that of a rival Mikado. A few of the lesser temples and tombs, and the beautiful park-like grounds, are but the remnants of the former glory of Ieno. Among these is a temple in the form of a roofless stage, in honor of the thousand-handed Kwanon. In the Middle Ages, during the civil wars between the houses of Gen and Hei, one Morihisa, a captain of the house of Hei, after the destruction of his clan, went and prayed for a thousand days at the temple of the thousand-handed Kwanon at Kiyomizu in Kyoto. His retreat having been discovered, he was seized and brought bound to Kamakura, the chief town of the house of Gen. Here, he was condemned to die at a place called Yui, by the seashore. But every time that the executioner lifted a sword to strike, the blade was broken by the god Kwanon, and at the same time the wife of Yorimoto, the chief of the house of Gen, was warned in a dream to spare Morihisa's life. So Morihisa was reprieved and rose to power in the state, and all this was by the miraculous intervention of the god Kwanon, who takes such good care of his faithful votaries. To him, this temple is dedicated. A colossal bronze Buddha, 22 feet high, set up some 200 years ago, and a stone lantern, 20 feet high and 12 feet round at the top, are greatly admired by the Japanese. There are only three such lanterns in the empire, the other two being at Nanzenji, a temple in Kyoto, and Atsura, a shrine in the province of Owari. All three were erected by the piety of one man, Sakuma Daizen Nosuke, in the year A.D. 1631. Iemitsu, the founder of the temple, was buried with his grandfather Ieyasu at Niko. But both of these princes are honored with shrines here. The shoguns who are interred at Uyeno are Ietsuna, Sunayoshi, Yoshimune, Ieharu, Ienori, and Iesada. The 4th, 5th, 8th, 10th, 11th, and 13th princes of the line. Besides them are buried five wives of the shoguns and the father of the 11th shogun. End of section 28